In this video, we'll be reviewing what the first derivative information gives us. So we'll be finding critical numbers, which is where the first derivative equals zero. And at those critical numbers, you may or may not have relative max, min, or neither. So we'll be able to find relative extrema. And that is because we'll be looking at the sign chart around those critical numbers to figure out what we're increasing and decreasing. So a lot of information coming from taking the first derivative and setting it equal to zero. So we have the first derivative information that we want to find for f of x is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 45x plus 2. So if we want to find all first derivative information, we're going to first find that first derivative and set it equal to zero. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of negative 3x squared is negative 6x. Derivative of negative 45x is negative 45, and the derivative of the constant 2 is 0. So we're taking that derivative by bringing down the power and subtracting one for the new power, and then we're setting it equal to 0. Since this has an x squared and an x in it, I'm going to try to factor this to solve it. So one thing I notice is that I can pull a 3 out from everything. There's no least power of x to pull, or else I would, but there's not an x on the 45, so I'll just pull out a 3. 3 times x squared would get me back to 3x squared. 3 times negative 2x would get me back to negative 6x. And 3 times negative 15 gets me back to negative 45. So I could check that over quick. We get 3x squared minus 6x minus 45. So we know we factored that out correctly. Now to continue factoring this, I want to think about what multiplies to be a negative 15 and adds up to be negative 2. So to multiply to be negative 15, I must have a positive times a negative to multiply to be this last number. Doing some reverse foiling here from algebra. And we want to multiply to be a negative 15, but add up to be a negative 2. So I have a positive and a negative factor, and the bigger factor must be the negative 1 for us to add up to be a negative 2. So it's going to be a negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2, and negative 5 times 3 gives me negative 15. So we figured out what multiplies to be negative 15 and adds up to be negative 2. So now we have 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 5 all has to multiply to be 0. This can only happen as long as one of these three factors is 0, right? 2 times 6 is not 0 because neither of those numbers are 0. So we need to make sure at least one of these numbers is 0, and then all three will multiply to be 0, as we are trying to find. So I want to see, can 3 equal 0? No. 3 is always 3. But can x plus 3 equal 0? Yeah. We could subtract 3 from both sides, or you might be able to tell just by looking at it. If you want x plus 3 to be 0, x would have to be negative 3. And if you want x minus 5 to equal 0 add 5, or you might already be able to tell that x has to be positive 5. So we found the first piece of information. These are our critical numbers. Whatever makes the first derivative 0 or undefined, but also can go into the original function. So these two numbers happen to make the first derivative 0, not undefined, because there's no denominator for that first derivative. And they go into the original function. Since the original function is a polynomial, any number can go in for x. So we have our critical numbers. We're going to use that for our second step, which is to make a sign chart. So those are going to go on our sign chart first. We have the numbers negative 3 and 5. And we want to see the sign of that first derivative. So I'm looking at my first derivative. And I have this polynomial form. It's going to be harder for me to plug in, so I'm going to plug into this factored form so that I don't even need a calculator to see what the sign of the first derivative is. So I'm going to use that factored form. And I'm going to think about a number before negative 3. So maybe negative 10 to test that in here. So the first factor of this derivative is 3, which is positive. If I do negative 10 plus 3, that's still going to stay negative. And then if I have negative 10 minus 5, that's also going to be negative. So plugging into the three factors of the derivative, 
that factored form, we get a positive times a negative times a negative. So this whole interval, two negatives make a positive. This interval is going to be positive. If the first derivative is positive, the function must have been increasing to start. Before it had that critical number where the derivative was zero, it was increasing. Between negative five, three and five is my favorite interval because I get to test zero. It's always nice to be able to test zero. So plugging in zero to the first piece, three is always going to be a positive. Then we'd have zero plus three, which is positive. But then zero minus five would be negative. So you'd have two positives, it would be a positive, but then you multiply it by a negative, and this interval is going to be negative. So you went from a positive derivative to a zero derivative at your critical number to a negative derivative. So here's the first part of that graph. It goes from increasing. Here we have our zero derivative at our soft peak, and it's decreasing. So if we went from increasing to decreasing, what did we just get there? A relative max, min, or neither. This must be a relative max to go from increasing to decreasing. So I'm going to label that in there. We have a relative max. Now to finish off my sign chart, I need to choose a number after 5, so maybe positive 10. I'm choosing random test values. You could have chosen 6, and that would be just fine. Or you could choose 200. That would be after 5 as well. Plugging into the factored form of the derivative, I would plug in 10. The first factor would still just be 3, so that would still be positive no matter what. Then we'd have 10 plus 3, which would be positive. And we'd have 10 minus 5, which would be positive. Three positives will multiply to be a positive. So we switch out our critical number from decreasing to increasing. So here's my critical number where the slope is 0. And it switches from decreasing to increasing. We have a relative min there. So to find all that first derivative information, well, there's the general shape of the graph increasing to zero derivative, decreasing to zero derivative, to increasing after. I can draw a nice picture. Here's my random sketch of the graph, and then we can find some information. So first of all, we can figure out what are the intervals where it's increasing. We would only switch at our critical numbers. So we have two intervals where it's increasing. If you don't like looking at the sketch of the graph, you can just look at the sign chart. Here's my two intervals of increasing. And so I would express that, remember, negative infinity is to the left and positive infinity is to the right. So we would say negative infinity to negative 3 for that first interval. Union, the second interval would be 10 to infinity. What's wrong with that? 10 was a random test value. I randomly chose 10. You could have chosen 6. You could have chosen 600. So make sure you only switch at your critical numbers. So I'm going to erase that or cross it out. I just want to remember we only switch at critical numbers. So before negative 3 and after positive 5 are two critical numbers. are going to come up in our answers a whole bunch. Then we have decreasing. There's only one interval where we are decreasing. And that is between our two critical numbers. So just right here, between the two critical numbers, negative 3 and 5. So on the interval from negative 3 to 5, you are decreasing. Or graphically, we're looking here between the two critical numbers. And then we can also find relative extrema. So we have a relative max at negative 3. And I want to find the y value of that point. If I plug in negative 3 to the derivative, I'm going to get 0 out because it's a critical number. It makes the derivative 0. So I'm going to go into the original function and plug in my negative 3. So I have parentheses negative 3 cubed minus 3 times negative 3 squared minus 45 times negative 3 plus 2. So plugging into the original function for the y values, only time we use the original function is if we want a y value. So the relative max is at negative 3 comma 83. And then the relative min would be at my other 
critical number. It would be at five, and I would plug into the original function again. And when you do that, you get negative 173. Plugging into the x cubed minus 3x squared minus 45x plus 2. Replacing that x with a 5. So there's all of our first derivative information, critical numbers, increasing, decreasing, relative max, and relative min. And looking at our answers, once you find your critical numbers, that tells you the two places or however many you have, for in this case, the two places I could switch from increasing to decreasing would only ever be at my critical numbers. And then the same thing for relative extrema, they would only ever happen at your critical numbers as well. So this answer heavily relies on finding those critical numbers correctly. If you're insecure about your factoring, what you could do to check it is plug it back into that not factored form. If we plug in five to that not factored form, we really will get zero out, which tells me that I factored correctly to find that five.